Hey, what is up guys and gals, Phantom Null here again, and today, guess what? We're looking at some City of Heroes! Uh, and honestly, I never thought I would say that again. But sadly, we're not looking at the full game of City of Heroes or anything like that. It's not like, you know, some buyout happened or something. Um, at least not that I know of, I haven't looked online for that kind of thing today. But, you know, somehow I doubt that that happened within the past 24 hours. So, anyway, moving right along uh, to why we're here, we have... The costume creator, the uh, the character editor um, of the actual game, the good folks over at the Titan Network uh, would have basically found a way to unlock the uh, character creator. And uh, in order to use it, you still need the City of Heroes uh, issue 23 client, which was the current live version, or the issue 24 beta client, uh, which of course was the you know forthcoming issue, uh, which you could download for uh, to try it on the beta server. So. You can now play with the character creator of City of Heroes. And not only that, but by using a uh, parameter tag in the, uh, the target and the properties, you can uh, access some NPC parts that, uh, you know, you can play around with and just make characters. So, you know, uh, for anyone who has not played with the City of Heroes character creator, which, you know, probably not a lot of people that haven't that are watching this, but if you haven't, you should know that the versatility of this character creator is fantastic. Um, and, you know, we're going to kind of take a look at this. You just see, you know, dude in his underpants right here. But <laughs> um, I'm going to go do a bunch of costumes. I have I have a ton of costumes saved. And a lot, you know, most of them are from when the game was live, of course. Um, but we're going to take a look at a bunch of the characters I've created just to take a look at the versatility of this creator. And, you know, again, why just having this tool, even without the game, is so awesome, so fantastic. Um, I even have a good friend that this was her favorite part of the game was creating characters. Uh, you know, playing them a game in the game. You know, she enjoyed, but uh, you know, just being able to play with this uh, is a huge boon uh, for people who used to play City of Heroes or anyone who just wants an outlet for creativity in order to uh, sort of realize their visions. Um, it's hard to deal with you know finer details of characters that you may have in mind, but you can you can easily get uh, at least something resembling what you have in mind with this character creator. Um, this is actually a character that I use in the uh, Architect Entertainment, which was a tool that you could use to create your own stories. This was a, um, you know, one of the minions that you would fight. He was actually a boss character, but uh, yeah. Um, here we have another one, and easily you can easily see they're part of the same faction, same sort of outfit, but he's missing the, the cloak and you know, just a little bit less elaborate, doesn't have the chin guard. Um, and his he's just got plain tights rather than the armor. Um, here is a, a hero that I actually ended up deleting, ultimately. Um, don't really remember what he was. He, he had a shield, I remember that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to move through this pretty quickly, because uh, I don't want this video to be two hours. But, um, again, this is just kind of to show off the versatility of this. And again, if you play City of Heroes, if you are a fan, you can go to the Titan Network forums. Look up Icon. That's what they're calling this uh, program. Look for the Icon uh, thread. And you can download this file. It's only like 10 KB. And you'll be able to access uh, the City of Heroes, Heroes character creator so long as you have the uh, City of Heroes file still on your computer. Um, yeah, you know, you do not need the NCSoft uh, launcher for this. In fact, I encourage you to delete that piece of trash, but be careful. Uh, do not allow, if you do delete the NCSoft launcher, it will ask you if you want to delete associated programs with the launcher. Do not let it do that. That will delete your City of Heroes files. But yeah, so long as you have the City of Heroes, uh, you know, in your program files, you're all set. Um, here we have another character. I believe she was, yeah, she was actually an AE version of a character that I sort of had a similar character of. Um, this is another AE enemy. You can see I have the AE you know, not tag, really, but I put AE in front of each of their names um, for all my AE enemies. Here we have, uh, this is a, this was a boss character. These characters, the Shadowed and Shadow Overlord and, and um, Overshadowed, these were all characters inside of a, a dream sequence that I had in the story arc. Uh, I should have created a video of my story arc, but I didn't, so that's gone. Um, this is a Dean. I have a character video of her. This is all of her costumes. Uh, clearly, the number four is uh, is the big different one here, and actually, it's my favorite. This ended up kind of being her default go-to costume for uh, for me. And this is actually one that I created just in the past few days. Um, I was playing around with the 
um, with the editor. And, uh, you know, this, these are all using the normal basic parts that you can, um, you, that you could access with player pieces. And 7 adds a little bit, and it uses uh, some of the NPC parts. Actually, I should say it only uses the NPC part in terms of this right here, around her bicep, that part right there, that's a Penelope Yen um, character piece. Or, of course, the grown-up Penelope Yen, not the kid Penelope Yen. And the NPC um, editor is also really useful because it allows you to access the auras and costume pieces that were unlocked by Incarnate stuff, which, sadly, the base editor does not have access to, at least at this point. Um, though in the future, that may change. So, uh, I should also note that the NPC editor is kind of glitchy. Um, I might show that off a little bit. Like, some costume pieces, if you go to them, you just can't move from them, so you kind of have to reload or reset your character or something. So, if you play with that, it's good to save your character, your creation, on a pretty frequent basis. But anyway, um, yeah, this character, this uh, costume, rather, was inspired pretty heavily by um, the Tales of Grace's character, Sophie. Um, and I kind of really like the theme uh, for, for Adine, um, in that... Um, she has a good friend that's, that was an android uh, in character. And so basically these gauntlets... I, uh, I'm going to load this costume real quick. Uh, sadly... Oh, yeah, it doesn't match in gender, so I've got to back out. But... Um, man, I kind of lost my train of thought. And <laughs> I didn't change the gender. Derp! Anyway, load up a Dean 7. And see, it gets rid of the uh, Penelope Yen piece. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, sorry, I had to, had to mute there. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Penelope end piece is going to disappear and change to a plant. Uh, <laughs> okay, it, didn't, it just kind of vanished. Uh, but yeah, you gotta kind of got to replace that when you load these costume pieces up. Because, you know, in the NPC editor, uh, it gets kind of funky. And the, uh, the green and pink, again, another thing that happens in the NPC editor. So here we have the Penelope end piece, uh, which is, of course, down below all the normal pieces. Uh, which I think stops at the um, magic robe. I think the medieval piece. It's yeah, because see, like there, that's, that's not even a shoulder piece. So these are for different models that are directly uh, with uh, you know NPC characters that were customized by the devs, um, not Diablo Penelope. So here we have the full costume. But the part I wanted to show off here is the gauntlets aren't just for show uh, on this character. We gave her some. Okay, well we had them, but they didn't save. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she has the Vanguard Blades colored like so. And I really liked uh, the look of this. And again, okay, well, yeah, it's kind of buggy. Like, you see the left claw didn't load up there, but that's happened to me before. Uh, but normally she would have the two claws. So you get the point. Uh, another difference of the NPC editor, um, you can add, you can get, um, look through a few poses. Oh, that sometimes do or don't work. Generally, if you load it up after you set it, it will work. So yeah, now she's gonna do the pop dance, <laughs> the Michael Jackson dance, obviously, is what that refers to. And dance eight, yeah. Two-handed taunt, even though she's not carrying a two-handed weapon, so. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Um, Arkery Brunsa did a character video on her. We're going to move a little quicker here, now that I've shown off a few of the NPC things. Azelina, this was her main costume. Um, we have Black Rose, this was her original costume. Number two, this was her main costume, ultimately. And still, probably, my favorite costume that I created in the original editor. Um, and the other two. And this is a, a Black Rose that I just kind of toyed with uh, a couple of days ago, just with a Battle Fury aura and, you know, Ascension Belt and stuff. I don't think I actually like it as much as the number three. But, uh, you know, she looks a little more empowered there, which was kind of the goal. Kind of make it like a sort of demigod version of her, you know, I guess you could say incarnate version. Which, you know, even though she wasn't incarnate as, you know, this, she looks like she's more showing off her power in this one. Uh, we have Demivend here, which is one of my favorite costumes. Uh, fairly simplistic, but I really like the layer of the, uh, you know, the shiny chainmail and the uh, organic armor gloves and, you know, the sort of blood runes that I envisioned uh, on the chainmail. 
underneath. We have this sort of almost uh, like dark skin rod around his face. And um, he's actually a sprite character, so he should have longer ears, but they just kind of clip through the hood if you gave him that, so I didn't. Um, here we have the Endless Witch, a character based off the Umaneko franchise, Beatrice. Beatrice, not Beatrice. Uh, yeah, Beatrice is gonna have a tryst. Anyway, uh, that was a terrible joke. Playing with Genesis. Uh, Heaven's Feel. Those two characters, again, have character videos as is Endless Witch and Demivend, actually. Um, actually, no, Demivend doesn't have one, but he's in the All the Rest video. Um, as is Heaven's Feel, actually. Flame of Genesis had his own video, and so did Beatrice. That's it. Here we have uh, Invisible Air, who is a character sort of based around the Saber character from the Fate Stay, Stay Night franchise. But yesterday I played with her costume. And we have this with just char uh, player character pieces, uh, which I was really proud of how this came out, uh, especially when you compare it to this. I think it looks way better. Um, then we have this one, which uses an NPC dress. Uh, which, don't like that it's torn, but, uh, you know, like if you zoom in, you can't even tell. Uh, big fan of how this costume came out. Um, let's load that, and... Uh, okay, she she shouldn't have that blade right there, um, but it's that's saved over from a Dean. Let's get rid of that. Um, that K didn't go away, that happens sometimes too. But since you have access to all the weapons, it kind of bugs out. Uh, but, anyway... What you should have is this right here colored something like this. And yeah. And then we have her sort of like preparing to use Excalibur. Um, and again, I mean, just look at that. You can you have an awesome female knight character here. Uh, I mean, and compare that to this just very, very, very anime-inspired, you know, video, anime video game-inspired character right here. Uh... And you just see the versatility of this character creator. We have a huge, crazy, you know, goth-type character. The very dark aura, you know, around here. Love the versatility of this creator, man. Even though City of Heroes is gone, this remains, and that's fantastic. So you can't actually play these characters, but it's still a lot of fun to play with. Um, moving right along. And these, this is not actually uh, one of my characters. Um, the ones named, labeled Nat are actually, uh, these are all characters of a friend of mine. That she kind of gave me these costumes because back before the game was being shut down, I was kind of uh, looking to use these in uh, the AE uh, Architect Entertainment for, uh, you know, for NPCs and stuff. So none of these characters are actually my creations. She's just adorable, isn't she? <laughs> um, I'm actually a big fan of this costume as well. I kind of was going through them too fast. Here we have Essex. She's the friend of a Dean that I mentioned, the android. Um, kind of going through these a little too quick, I think, so. Here we have Hinako. That is Kiri. Mayumi. This is a... I, I'm a huge fan of this costume, too. I think this costume is fantastic. This might be my favorite costume that she created. Uh, I really think the divine aura around her adds a lot, too. Um, though in the, her case, it's actually supposed to be sort of like a water spray, you know? Kind of almost like particles. Visible particles in the air. Um, another costume. Very gothy costume. Really like this costume, too. I mean, it's not like... Hugely complicated, but I think it really came out well in terms of a, a uniform. And I really like the color scheme, too. The blue and red, uh, and, uh, you know, the differing red. Brighter red, and then the gold. I think that came out really well. Here, we have Sinicha. Terror. I really... Like, this costume, I know it's not super diverse or anything, but I really like it, and the main reason, I love this hair piece. It's fantastic. The hair curls. Um, I also think the war paint adds a bit. Um, and I really like the color scheme. I think that brown and green are, are really kind of underused colors. So uh, I, I like that. Um, again, I think the green goat works well on this costume, too. Here we have Trice. She's a <laughs> kind of a pedestrian character, um, and that's intentional. That's why her costume is, you know, basic clothing. So, you know, 
I think that is good uh, in terms of representing that. Here we have Yuriko, and we have cat version Yuriko. She's a uh, sort of anthropomorphic character, um, claws to, uh, you know, represent her, you know, cat-like claws, even though, you know, clearly they look like, uh, you know, sort of wolverine claws, but you can't help that. Here we have Neo, uh, another character that I'm really proud of, uh, and we're past the characters, uh, my buddies now, these are back to my characters. Um, this is a representation of the Berserker character from Fate Stay Night, Orion Fuji, original character. Um... Again, like I just like the green and white. Um, I think I really have a soft spot spot for uh, for green teal. Um, you know, kind of those darker, more underused characters in you know, in terms of a superhero uh, sense, which you know tends to go for brighter, more flashy colors in a lot of times. Uh, we have Phantom Kisho. Why do I have two of those? Well, whatever. Uh, time to delete that one because he does not follow the naming convention that I uh, I put forth. The one is supposed to be at the end of all the costumes, so clearly I just not gotten rid of that one. But yeah, we have Phantom Kisho here. Phantom Inferno here. Uh, and then we have a direct inspired female version uh, from the Phantom Inferno game of uh, Cal Devins from that game. Uh, so yeah. We have Prince Kengo here. <laughs> this is this is almost uh, like a a complete joking costume. You know, you got the wrestling sort of championship belt here. This guy does not take himself all that seriously most of the time, but when he does, he goes for more of this kind of deal. Uh, and this character is a demigod, and he has his own character video as well. So if you're interested, check that out—the Prince Kengo video. Um, and yeah, since he's a demigod, when he gets serious, uh, business is about to pick up. He was a water blast um, time manipulation corruptor, and he was awesome. Uh, had, did have big endurance issues though. Here we have Riku Rikori. He was a fire blast blaster, fire blast mental manipulation. Manipulation that is. Uh, we have Rinto Saka here. Um, though I prefer this costume. Uh, she is another representation of the Fate Stay Night universe. We have a fairy girl, Rosalina here. Uh, Azalina was also a fairy from earlier. For some reason, I have a thing of making fairy characters. Don't ask. Uh, I, I cannot give you a satisfactory answer. Here we have Setsuna Miyuki. Um, very basic costume, but again, kind of fit with him because he's kind of a kid, and it was almost like him playing dress-up of a superhero, almost. Um, you know, he got managed to get the, the chest strap, but other than that, <laughs> it's very, uh, you know, hey, I went in my dad's closet and threw together the best superhero costume I could. Uh, we have Sky Taggart here. Uh, he was a broadsword, shield, defense, scrapper. Uh, kind of like this costume. I, I, it's pretty basic, but I think it kind of suited the character. Um, I don't know, he almost, the costume almost makes me think of like a vampire hunter or something, even though he wasn't. Uh, I don't know, for some reason that I, I just kind of like that look for him. Uh, Stormringer Bucket you and the number two version, which kind of looks more like a Star Wars Darth character or something. Uh, minus the Ascension shoulder pads, but, you know. Uh, we have Selvin Tathriel, which is still probably one of my favorite costumes I've got, period. Um, big fan of this costume. Uh, again, I just like the, the green and brown, I think, is, is kind of one of the things that makes it. I also like the, you know, chainmail look. So, Toshio Fuji. I know I've kind of, you know, looked through a lot of these characters before in character videos, but again, this is more about the character creator and icon, and showing off the versatility, uh, and, you know, in terms of, hey, you can still do this kind of thing. So this costume is actually, um, this is with all NPC parts, I, but this is one I created after the end of the game, and this is actually with some NPC parts, uh, like the Ouroboros, uh, straps on his legs and around his chest. Uh, I prefer this costume to the other one, which, you know, this one's made with NPC card parts. This one is made, or, no, this one is made with normal player card parts. This one's made with NPC parts as well. Uh, big fan of this. This is almost sort of a, a cosmic envisioning of this character, who was originally like this, but this looks a lot more badass, doesn't it? <laughs> um, these, now we're getting to some unused characters, uh, which actually have, I have Aegis of Terra here, so we're going to go up in here, because... I shouldn't have Aegis of Terra up here because, yeah, like I said, I deleted him, so he is meant to be in the unused category. So, yeah, got rid of that. Let's go back to the unused 
area. I thought I'd uh, cleared out all of my, you know, repeats, but clearly I had not. Uh, here we have Ultra Rug Brune Stud, who's actually a character that I had until the end. Um, but I, I was thinking about deleting her, even though she was 50 and actually had part of her build done. I never really liked playing tanks, and she was a tank, uh, and she was an invulnerability tank, which I never really got into invulnerability all that much, even though I got her to 50. <laughs> so, you know, I enjoyed playing her, I guess. Um, this is on Blood, oh yeah, Bloodford Andromeda, which is a takeoff of another Fate Stay Night character, uh, the Rider character, right from the Rider class of Fate Stay Night, uh, which I think this costume came up pretty well. I could probably do better with some of the NPC parts now, but I haven't tried. Um, I loved the costume for this, because I thought it came out as a well rendition, even though it's really simplistic. Um, but I ended up, she ended up being another shield defense character. Uh, shield defense super strength, I think. And I ended up uh, having other shield defense and super strength characters, so I ended up just getting rid of her. Um, here we have Celius, uh, who is a character I ended up deleting as well. She was sort of an early uh, concept of a Dean. So she ended up just kind of getting rolled up into that. Uh, as you can see, her costume is actually even almost exactly the same as I, I think it's a Dean 2 or 3. Yeah, a Dean 3. It's just slightly different face, uh, fire instead of green aura. Um, you know, very similar. Uh, now we're moving on to the Extricator, who is in the uh, All the Rest video. The Foreshadowed. Who is a character I deleted? Michiko of the Wind, who was a, a character I had in Champion. She's also in the All the Rest video, uh, and she was one of my very early characters. And I still really like this costume, even though it's, you know, just mainly a set. I don't know. I, I just kind of like it. And again, I think it might have something to do with the brown. I don't know. <laughs> um, this was a modified version of the uh, United Hero Brigade uniform, which was a Champion supergroup that I was a part of at one point. Um, this was a modified version of a, a costume I had for a character in that. Um, this is a character I had called Needy and Rena, who was inspired by the Star Ocean 2 character, Rena Lanford. Uh, and another one, and another one, and another one. This was the United Heroes Brigade uniform for her. Again, uh, pretty big fan of all her costumes. I, I think I'm least fond of this one, but uh, I really like this one, this one, and this one. Uh, which, you know, I can't take any credit for this, because this was their uniform. So, uh, hey, awesome guy, awesome job, guys. I can talk, really. Uh, here we have the Nuress of Nightmares, who was a uh, robotics mastermind I had at one point, but ultimately got deleted. Uh, we have Netherrath, who was a character I used in a, my, um, I think my three uh, low-level villain story arcs uh, videos. So if you're interested in him, check those out. Here we have the Nimble Blaze, which is actually, uh, amusingly... A, uh, a fire farmer I created. She was just the character I created for farming, really, but I kind of wanted a, a decent costume for her. And, uh, you know, I kind of liked it. But, hey, I... Yeah, I have to say, the one and only cat girl that I ever created, so I'm part of the problem, apparently. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, she has no story, no concept, um, just a character I created as a farmer. She was a fire, fire farmer. Uh, I never actually really did much with her though. I used her to power level a couple of my characters. Um, this is the Phantasmal Anomaly, a character that I deleted. I still like the concept for that I have in my head, uh, but I never really found the power sets I wanted to go with him. Uh, Premia Aleki, her Aleki, that is not Licky. Prim Premia Aleki. Yeah, yeah, there we go. She, her concept is that she's a doll come to life, actually. Um, could, it would have been nice if I could make her, like, you know, a foot tall, but, uh, you know, kind of made do with it, making her as small as she could possibly be. Um, we have Sa uh, Satsuki Yumizuka, who is a uh, Tsukihime character homage. We have Silent Har Harmony here, uh, who is a Sonic Blast something else corruptor. Anyway, she got deleted. Uh, we have Taki here, with, who was a character that I deleted very shortly. Uh, that I played basically to try out Jewel Blades when it came out. Ultimately, Selvin Tathrael ended up being uh, a Jewel Blades character that I ended up playing up to 50. Um, I deleted her shortly after making her, but yeah. Here we have Zion the Unborn, <laughs> which is a uh, character from the Bloody Roar franchise. This is a Bloody Roar 3 uh, costume that he had. 
pretty simplistic, but I think it's a really, really good representation of that character if you know who that is. Here we have Yutsukaze, uh, a troll character that I created, and ultimately, I don't think I ever deleted her off of uh, Protector, but I never really played on Protector, so she just kind of sat there. Here we have Yasuo the Firebird, a character that I hold near and dear to my heart. This is his original costume, uh, very superhero themed costume. Uh, this is another one of those, uh, though this is almost more of a sort of Teen Titans character, which I guess kind of suits him in a way, because he's, he's a young, he's a phoenix, I should mention, is his concept. Humanoid phoenix, uh, he can take phoenix form, uh, but you know, that's not the form he's usually in. Um, here's his casual wear costume. And from here, I think we're getting into costumes I made after the end, uh, or rather, in Icon itself. Uh, no, okay, that's right, I forgot, almost forgot about this costume. This is his, uh, he's part of basically a hero troop, um, the Warriors of Mariposa, who are basically based off of a webcomic series that by uh, a buddy of mine creates. Uh, based off of that universe, if you want to check it out, check it out at uh, the Mariposa Revelation. Uh, I don't remember the URL, but if you look it up on Google, you'll find it. Uh, but yeah, he's based off of that, and this is a costume I created with uh, NPC parts in the current character creator after the game has been uh, has been closed, and this costume is just freaking bad assery. Uh, <laughs> this is basically my envisioning of him because right now he's really young uh, in in concept. He's like seven years old, but you know the thing is that um, basically he he uh, grows up quicker uh, in in our universe. Is our idea. So he's really young, uh, but he looks older. This is basically him thousands or hundreds of hundreds or thousands of years in the future. Basically, once he's ascended to being essentially a cosmic level being is the uh, is the thought behind this, and I love it. Uh, again, this this may even be my favorite costume now. Uh, it's not overly complicated, but I just love the way it looks uh, in terms of a phoenix representation. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm not sure if it's if I like it more than the Black Rose costume. I'm not sure if I like it more than the Sylvan costume. And there may be one or two others that it would be up there with. Uh, this is another one that I went for, but I tried to just use costume pieces that players could have accessed in the game. Um, because this, this sash right here is something that players just could not access. Everything else is something the characters could access, but this sash here is a, uh, is something that the uh, NPC Romulus Augustus used. So, you couldn't actually recreate that character if the game was still around in game. This is something you could recreate, and I feel kind of more suits him because he's actually kind of, well, I mean, granted, this is hundreds or thousands of years in the future, but currently he's kind of a naive character. Uh, so, the white and red suits him a little more than the black and red. Um, you know, in the headband wings and stuff kind of makes him look like, you know, hey, gaudy godlike uh, <laughs> adornments, you know, that kind of thing. And finally, we have Zephalina. And that's all the characters that I have saved uh, on my hard drive. But, I mean, just between these, you can you can see the versatility uh, available in this creator. Uh, it's just... It's amazing. Even more now that you can access the, uh, you know, the player parts, or rather the NPC parts. So, yeah, if you're an ex-City of Heroes uh, player, what the heck are you waiting for? You need to download this icon tool right now, provided that you still have the, uh, of course, the client files on your computer. If you don't, there are ways to uh, to still find it. Um, right now, I think that uh, that Leandro from the from the Titan boards is offering it up. Um, but hey, you know, who knows how long that'll be? And, uh, you know, it's not like I've asked for the client from it myself, uh, because I still had it, so, hey, don't quote me on that. But either way, uh, yeah, this, it's so awesome this is available. Thanks so much to the, uh, to the Titan Network guys that, uh, made this possible. I believe it's Codewalker that made this available. I don't think it's Guy Perfect, but I might actually be mixing that up in my head. I should have looked at that before I started this video, but I didn't. So, uh, yeah, either way, thank you, I think, to Coda Walker for this. Uh, and thank you for the people that inspired the idea and how to actually get this workaround uh, from, uh, from I believe, it was, you know, uh, Coda Walker. Uh, because without you, this would not have been possible again. Hey, I do <laughs> we just got a big mix-up there when we tried to correct the costume, so no, just go back to this. But, uh, yeah, 
Thank you guys so much for allowing this to be possible. You still can't play the game with this, um, you know, as you can pretty much plainly see uh, here. And, you know, I'll prove that, hey, nothing illegal going on here in NCSoft, because if you try to, you know, go in here, you just cannot access the game. Uh, it's not like this is a private server or anything, so hey, do not go crazy. This is not an infringement on your property or whatever. Um, so yeah, this is just accessing stuff within the game that you abandon. Urgh. But anyway, <laughs> oh, and I should mention that, yeah, once you get into the NPC creator, you can't actually access archetype or powers or anything. It just automatically takes you here. And because of that, you cannot actually view powers other than archery and devices, which doesn't make any freaking sense to me. But those are the default uh, costume or other powers that are in there, and you can't can't change those even if you select a weapon uh, of just one type or whatever. So, yeah. But you can if you access just the basic icon without the NPC parts, because then you select your archetype and powers ahead of time. So, you can do certain things with the with it if you have the um, you know, the NPC pieces available, and certain things uh, if you just go with the basic icon tool without the NPC parts. Uh, so, you know, you just kind of play with them, and I suggest making a shortcut to both of them if you're uh, someone who really likes playing with your costumes. So hopefully this was informative, that was the basic goal of this, and maybe to entertain with us, you know, some of my costumes. Maybe it sparked some creativity, maybe you have ideas for Icon uh, to use yourself now. So either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, <laughs> I didn't expect to be bringing forth any more City of Heroes content in the near future, if ever. Um, so hey, this was a pleasant surprise for me to be able to bring to you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please stay tuned to the channel, and... Long live City of Heroes, even if it's just in this form. Thanks for watching, guys.